Good morning, everybody. So today is um, our next barangay fiesta, and uh, of course uh, we have. A, I have a Sumba friend there, also. And uh, last night uh, she messaged me and invited me to go eat lunch there. But of course I'm gonna go, and I'm not sure with James if he gonna go with me, but I'm definitely gonna go there today. Meanwhile, I'm gonna show you guys what I got lately. So I am so happy to have it. You know, like of course, uh, last sun last Sunday I've been to the market and I was so happy to found this one. It's a, I think it's a experiment, and of course I just let it stay, put it here in the pot. And what I'm doing is my coffee ground is I mix this one here. So to make the soil uh, rich, so happy to have it. So if uh, I want to make uh, like Vietnamese, fresh Vietnamese uh, rule, spring rule, I already it's so handy that I have it here. So yeah, it's so nice to have that one. Still no rain and the grass really dry. So check it out. Who is here? Very early in the morning, of course. Kids always on the gadgets. It's Lollipop King. I think he don't have any class. You have no class? No school? Tulilot? No school? Yeah, the reason that he was here so early because uh, his mama was uh, doing some laundry today here. So, I know it's there's no rain, but I really keep my plants watering every day. No matter if uh, less water or what, but I just don't want to. Uh, I just don't want to see my plants struggling, you know, for the water. So even every other day or or every day, you know, I even just once a day, I love to water this. One flower, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Hmm. Good morning, everybody. You see that? Not a cloud in the sky. Not a single one. Let's look at this. Boy, this pepper plant. It's doing good right here, man. It is doing good. Look at all these peppers, bro. Look at that. Yeah, it is doing good. Well, I hope everybody's doing good out there today. Hope everybody's having a great day. We're getting our day started. I want to tell you a couple pretty cool things. And uh, first, let's look at that glass. I got the middle sections open up there, but that's pretty cool. See that blue glass up there? First, I've actually even looked at it from out this side. I'm going to close the others where I can get a view of it all shiny and blue. So, guys are over in the Bayakubo over there, uh, waiting to get their day started. And let me tell you about that. So, this is something I think is pretty cool about my work crew. They start their day working here at 8 o'clock in the morning. Do they wait until 8 o'clock or 7.55 to be here to start their day? No. Sometimes they're here at 7.15, 7.30. And they just get together and just hang out in the Bayakubo early in the morning. Sometimes even earlier than that. I'll look see somebody out there at 7 o'clock. And they're just chilling, 
they bring their coffee over with them. They all just sit in there and talk about whatever they want to talk about and then laugh and enjoy. And then when it's time to get busy for work, about 7.55, they come out and start preparing. And at lunch, you think, man, they just want to get out of here and get home, right? <clears throat> Many of them will go home and eat real quick. 15 minutes, man. 10, 15 minutes, they done. Ate up their lunch, and they come right back over here. And they'll either lay in the Bakubo or they'll go upstairs. I don't care where they go. And, uh, and they chill, take a rest take a nap <laughs> and but they come right back here you know it's it's kind of funny you would just think in the mentality like from what I'm used to with people you know like they just want to get the heck out of Dodge and not spend any minute at the work and that they don't have to but it's, it speaks volumes that they're pretty happy what's going on you know we had a tragedy absolute freaking tragedy hmm. built my beautiful catamaran my eco-friendly yacht my yatchet and then it all went to hell had these big blocks of styrofoam told them put that styrofoam up underneath that hollow void in the middle between those two pontoons on my catamaran. Mel and I had to go sitting, come back, they tied that styrofoam, hanging around the back like a bunch of fenders doing that thing. Tied them up underneath the pontoons, all randomly, in the back only. So it was setting up like a 1970s muscle car jacked up big in the back and riding low in the front <laughs> and then can't make this up and then we had that thing to where we could put bamboo down and roll it into the shore if a storm's coming right <laughs> so even right here I can take my pickup get right here put a rope on the front and uh, and have those what we call them rollers those thick pieces of bamboo and roll it up just like they do the pump boats except I could use the extra effort of the truck and then when we roll it back out, we can use the force of gravity because this is downhill right here. Can't do it with styrofoam stuck underneath the back of it. Big old block sticking down, you know, foot and a half, two foot, you know. It's one foot styrofoam, but the way they had it all at crazy ways, I mean, yeah. Anyway, and they'd already launched it out in the water like that, man. Couldn't even get them changed. Couldn't get them where they need to be. And uh, and it was just a dang mess. And then I made my my anchors, and they and I wanted those just as temporary. And I have a big main anchor, and those little small ones was just temporary. While we got the big main one out, then the small ones were supposed to be to go put out for uh, buoys for our net for our swim area that we're supposed to have up. They slide these anchors all on the one rope that now you can't even get them picked back up. So they're like a daisy chain on this rope. God almighty. Can't even get them back up. But they would roll because the weight of that thing, I didn't make them to hold that thing there. I made that great big one to hold it. So they would roll. So, of course, waves come. It would just roll all three of those little round weights I'll show you. So these were just to mark our swimming area. And they slid the rope down through them in a row. And there's no way out there in the water you could pick three of those up on one rope together. And then this last one, instead of sliding it up, they just tied it on knots out on it. Anyway, so in the waves that hit that thing, it, all these would just do this. They would just roll on the sea floor, just like in a straight line. And of course, came back to shore. We couldn't get it where we wanted it because they were too heavy to pick up. My God, what a catastrophe. And this is why when everybody says, why do you stand over them boys? <laughs> well, that is why. So we made this big heavy one right here. And this joker is heavy. And it's got this galvanized eye bolt that's down in it into a big galvanized plate. And it's got a steel grid down in there. And man, we can even barely move this. And that was another funny thing is uh, 
they kept trying to move this thing laying on its side and I said, you know, it is round. It is a wheel. <laughs> if you stand it up, no matter how heavy it is, it'll roll. I've demonstrated it to them the other day. We left it propped up here so you can get your fingers back underneath it. You stand it back up and they're like, oh. So yeah, they invented the wheel. <laughs> the wheel has been invented. So, nonetheless, strong winds came. We had no anchor out. We had these anchors that they thought they just rolled on the bottom and it come around and pushed up onto the shore with some strong wind and waves and uh and it beached them man it was beached and we've just been leaving it like that until the winds laid and it was a calm day because no matter what you tried to do the waves would just bury it back in and today we lifted it up <laughs> you can see where it was buried in here and uh and today we lifted it up we cut the styrofoam loose and before we launch it back out in the water and put the put the yachet put the yacht back in the ocean we're putting these styrofoam blocks back underneath and this styrofoam we got it where it won't go out into the water it's all wrapped in a fine screen so they're underneath the back there right now Tying in styrofoam. Uh, I'll show you the lead engineers that engineered the first styrofoam mishap. Uh, uh, go ahead, smile for the camera. <laughs> My engineers. <laughs> Hello everyone, so we're going to Piesta with Tita Lorena. So food again. <laughs> Naka jump shoot. <laughs> uh. Yes, we're going to Piesta. And there's a lot of food, so no diet for today. <laughs> <laughs> so we're heading there right now with Tita Lorena's Tita Lorena house. Timing. Well, so we're in the afternoon now. First off, we're needing to avoid a cave-in. So we need to get this thing dug down to the level it needs to be at. And then we need to get something plastered up around those sides to protect uh, from having a cave off. Especially if we have some rains to show up, it's going to be a big old mess. So what I had them to do is go get this steel matting right here. And we're going to bend this around these outside edge. And um, then we're going to put this this wire right here it's kind of like not really chicken wire but uh we'll put this wire on it right here then we're going to take a concrete portland mix just like they render walls with and we're going to go around and layer a layer of concrete on this around and that will support this thing 
against the cave in, especially on a curve, it ought to be really strong. While we set all of our plumbing and our, prepare our steel for a permanent solid structure inside of it. So this would just be working like a retaining wall back and behind it to protect us from a big cave off. We've, we've experienced it before. And so I want to head that off. I need to do it really quick here too. So I need to pull a line here. And I told the guys, be careful when I pull this line because it's going to give me an exact measurement for my water line and my depths. And uh, I need to get that set all the way around right here. And we need to find how much more we need to dig, get it dug, get this in there, and get busy rendering it. So we're down here transposing a... A water line, a fill water line that we've created back here in the back on this existing concrete, and we're transposing it up around to these stakes coming around. So we'll know what the water line is back here in the back, and we know exactly how deep to dig here right now. And I know people are going to say, oh, get a laser level and all that. Well, we don't need all that. We're not a construction company. We're not going to be doing this building again, again, again. All we need is now, and this old school water tube right here is as accurate as anything. I don't need 10 million gadgets stacked in my garage. So it's that top one right there. And then, yeah, and then go ahead and make one over here right on the end of that wall there too. I'll tell you what, make it on the inside right here, right to the inside there, yeah. Now, I want you to, while you're already doing it, go in here and make some marks along the side and then the back backer and double check it against the first one. Go back to that first one over there and work around and then double check this also. So that would be the water line right there. And that that's about what I wanted on this end. That would be three foot of water that looks pretty good just a little bit of clean out down here of course we got to pour a thick bottom on this but uh pretty close man it's pretty close this stake here is kind of far back but it too yeah it looks dead on And so on the very, very end right here, I was going to have it at three foot and then it'll slope on down. Let's see here at four, man, that's, that's looking good. <clears throat> yeah, so it's, it's looking great. So it's kind of working out pretty good. We need to shave back a little bit more on that side. We just did it and all that fall from it. We're backfilling where they took out a little bit too much right there. So it's all working out there on that. Mark, the most important thing than those beams yeah. is to get this locked before rain comes. And it could come, they're talking about, they're talking about what, what's tomorrow, Tuesday or Wednesday? Wednesday. Wednesday. And we got a chance of rain tomorrow. So, to hold it in place. Yeah, I know. Yeah, well, we'll get it in place and look at it here and, uh, and see what we need to do. We'll get this level in here first. They need to dig out a little bit right there. See that hump of sand? Then we're going to set it in there. But they got to get that side down flat over there first. All that where dings at 
All that needs to be dug down. Yeah. Yeah, and you gotta get all that moved up. We're going to kind of pull a bunch of nylons. And the side of that footing we poured right there, we're gonna to have to chip some of that down in the back. It's sticking up a little bit too high there. We'll have to chip some of it down. But we'll get it. We'll, we'll get it. Yeah. Yeah. We might have to add some sand back in there. That's easy to level. Hey, Dink, before you, that sand's gonna keep falling out. Get that water hose and spray that. Not a stream, a spray, okay? Don't, not power wash. <laughs> Just a spray, not a stream. There we go. Well, we got that perimeter beam poured in all around and we got that steel mesh up there. We got it tied to the rebar.